Hi, this is Fountain here, and um, I'm just recording while it's raining, so excuse um, the slight uh, background noise, but I'm just feeling the urge to record right now, and I'm in a park. Why not? Anyway, I digress. So today I want to talk about uh, closed loop um, economic systems, otherwise known as kind of a circular economy. And you may or may not have come across this kind of terminology before, and there are sort of economic uh, systems that are similar, um, you know, and this kind of idea also picks at other, um, I guess, models around economic systems as well. So I'm not going to go too much into what it is, but um, I thought it'd just be really nice to bring this forth into light. It's it's one um, economic system out of a few that I feel uh, could be really beneficial in, uh, I guess, creating, um, wouldn't necessarily say new, but creating um, maybe improved economic systems to make our, our world um, you know, maybe more in align with our social values and um, environmental values. So, yeah. In a nutshell, circular economies are, it's an economic system based on principles like reusing, recycling, refurbishment, manufacturing, sharing, repairing, and it's like a closed loop system. So if you go and online, you'll find some diagrams that'll kind of represent, very simplified, but what a closed loop system is, and then you'll probably be able to find diagrams similar to, um, I guess what you might call a very popular way in which economics are done in many countries or nations, whatever term you like to use, around the world. And it's with the intention, I guess, of minimizing um, resource inputs, waste, pollution, and carbon emissions, um, which is not necessarily, a, you know, a bad thing, I would say, you know, if we want to focus on being more renewable, um, more eco-friendly, then, you know, this could be a way in which helps, or at least getting um, businesses to start thinking in that kind of way. Now, I guess is, you know, when you're thinking about um, if you have a business and you're, you're selling products, probably more in, than the sense of services, um, you know, there's, there's certain principles, right? So there's the buy aspect, like where you're going to get the materials to sell. So, you know, you want to be looking at things like biodegradable materials, recycled materials, um, you know, or even look at actually providing a business that is a service and not actually like a product focus. I don't want to go too much into the difference between a service and a product. Um, you can probably find more information about that online, of course, so I'd recommend that you look into that if you're not quite sure what I mean when I talk about those two differentiations. And then obviously um, another aspect of running business is how you're going to make. So, you know, if you're making something with from one material you need to change into another to then be able to make into the product that is that you actually want to sell. I mean, it could be even something as simple as like you've got pretty much the whole thing already that you bought it, but you want to put a label on it. You know, it could be very small, but it could be rather large. It could be really turning like something from a mineral into something really big that's completely different to what the mineral may have, you know, first looked or like when you first got it. And you want to obviously be looking at things like refurbishment and your manufacturing. You know, what kind of things can you do in that aspect that are, you know, more eco-friendly and more um, sustainable for, like, even just the local community. And then there's the sell aspect. So, like, I know there's been a lot, a lot of changes made, um, you know, especially in the last year about um, different ways that people want to sell their products and even sell their services. Um, you know, with people trying to avoid physical contact with each other and la da 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 da. Um, you know, and some businesses are trying to look at, you know, even just an office. You know, do I really need this whole office space for everybody to drive from their home to this place, or can some people actually just work from their home? You know, because then you don't need to actually lease, like, a, or even buy. I know it's not always a good idea to buy. Um, Premises, but that's a whole other video for another day and I don't really want to be giving financial advice <laughs> either because that's just like putting your toe in a really hot steaming pot of water that you just shouldn't do <laughs> especially on such a broad basis in this kind of platform so yeah so with that you know you want to maybe you can look at you know do I actually need a massive space or can I actually um, use a smaller space 
you know, and that goes, I guess comes around to the fact that like we're using up a lot of land to develop all these buildings and all these things, you know, residential and commercial and anything in between. Um, but maybe we actually don't need such big, you know, um, such big spaces to be able to sell our products and our services. You know, I already know that many of you are probably um, working online and working at home. So, you know, it's like your home and your business becomes one and that can save a lot of things like transport costs and electricity and all those kind of things, but I kind of digress. So yeah, with the sale aspect, you want to be looking obviously your leasing options, um, looking at sharing platforms and things like pay as you use kind of services as well. And um, the next thing I want to talk about is the disposal. So, you know, especially when you've got a product, how, how is the disposal going to be of of maybe some things in the production line that I don't I don't necessarily use, um, which you know to to then like you know it, it kind of becomes a little bit redundant. And there's so many like pretty much most businesses has a, a byproduct of what it is that they're making that often they struggle to find a way to um, to make reuse of it, or they just find it's just easy to dump it, which we know is not always a great thing, right? So you wanna be looking at things like waste to energy, um, deconstruction and like composting. You know, I mean composting is a simple one when it comes to things like food, but that's not always easy for some businesses because they're stuck in a place like New York and there's hardly any green spaces and la di da di da. That's not to say that that can't happen. And I slightly digress. And then the last aspect I wanna talk about is obviously finance. Um, like as we know, most um, major financial institutions, you know, they're all intertwined in some way. Um, I mean, everything's interconnected in the world anyway, but, you know, a lot of what they obviously invest in is not always maybe something that aligns with what your ethical values are in regards to, um, you know, communities and environment. And not that those are separate things either, but that's a whole other video for another day. So, you know, you want to be maybe looking at things like crowdfunding or incentivizing um, the end of life returns. And, you know, that's, I guess those are just kind of some of the aspects that you want to look at in the production line of how to create more of a closed loop um, economic system, even just within like your business. And I guess I could provide you like with an example of something that's trying to be closed loop. Um, I know of like a supermarket in Melbourne in Australia and we've been, I don't live in Melbourne, I'm in um, the Gold Coast actually while I'm recording this. And um, I don't live here either, just, anyway, that's irrelevant. <laughs> um, so there's a supermarket in Melbourne where it's kind of like a pay as you feel. Um, so a lot of other supermarkets will um, give like goods that maybe they deem, maybe the packaging was like wrong or it's close to its use by date, um, they'll give that or well, I'm not sure if they give or if they donate or if there's some money that gets exchanged. Um, I don't think that's really the point of what I'm trying to say. And then that supermarket that takes those goods and those other donated foods and whatnot, then sets up a space for people to come in and pay as they feel. And um, I mean, there's a lot of aspects about that that can be really helpful. Obviously it can provide like um, more affordable food for people. But also, you know, if that's other super, those other big supermarkets were going to um, chuck out that stuff, you know, that's just going to go to the dump most of the time, right? Um, when that could have actually gone to feed people with a need and potentially that helps more, create more of a closed loop system. You know, it's not perfect. Um, there's many things I'm sure that can be picked apart with that, but it's just providing you, I guess, with a simple example of, of you know, how that can look. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, um, because I have quite a few friends that are involved um, with these kind of groups and are very much interested in, um, in this type of gardening, and that's permaculture. And permaculture, the way I see it, is like an, it's an amazing design um, principle that uses some similar ideas of a circular economy. It's like it, it preserves like whole ecosystems, right, in, in someone's garden. and. It's, it tries not to decompartmentalize things. It tries to look at a whole system and how can we go, you know, look at what it is that's on the land, um, what it is that the land needs, what it is, you know, that the animals need and that the other plants need. And it really, like, and it's very individualized 
to like an area or to um, to a community. So, like I would really recommend if you look, could look into um, permaculture. Um, like I'm I'm vegan, so I prefer like that sort of um, veganic permaculture farming. Um, that's just my like personal preference. Um, and you know, also another example I wanted to share is like I quite like it when um, I can. I can get a product or a service from a friend that lives close or a small business that's close. And that's another way to kind of create a circular economy of, you know, the income that I'm receiving is then shared among those that, um, that I care about and that I know are of small businesses that are not necessarily always focused on like profit margins. It's more about um, creating a community economy. And so I'd encourage you to support your friends' um, businesses if you know them and that they're doing things that, um, that you know, like it could be something that they, they're a hairdresser or they're a photographer or, um, or they're a builder, you know, and they have their own kind of business. And, you know, if you need something done or you, you want to help them out, like getting in contact with them and saying, hey, look, like I really love what you're doing and I really want to support you. And even... The next level would be if you were able to even exchange services. So maybe you are a, um, I don't know, a massage therapist and your friend is a, a builder. I don't know. Just an example. Maybe you can exchange services. It's Just to be clear, I, I do understand that a lot of um, tax departments in governments don't necessarily like this idea um, but like I have seen it being used um, in what they would call like time banks so an, it's, it's like an exchange of time um, you know the, the massage therapist and a the builder or a dentist all these things and exchanging for um, for services and that could be another way to kind of create a low close um, closed loop kind of economic system and keep it really circular as well within the economy keeping it really local so yeah that's that's what I wanted to touch on when in regards to circular economies. There's actually quite a lot that I could cover. And I also know that there's a little bit of, you know, what some might call um, greenwashing or social washing that can go on with, you know, a business promoting themselves as being a circular economy, um, you know, doing closed loop systems. There's still things that maybe they're doing that they could always, you know, do better and better and better. And that's not to put them down for the good work they're trying to do, but also make you realize that just because they do this one thing or they try to do this um, principle within their business doesn't mean that it disregards everything that they're doing in their business. So yeah, if you want to share some more, you're welcome to um, comment in the comment section down below. Uh, you can contact me on other social media um, platforms there in the description box down below as well. And I hope to see you in the next vlog.